Hey guys, this is Fide Master Kostya Kavutsky here for chess.com and today I'm going to be doing part two of a lecture that I started last time here on YouTube and that is for the topic on how to break through in closed positions. In the first video we covered pretty much what it means to generate a breakthrough, what sort of things you should look for and what it means to have a closed position. So if you want more info on that, you should definitely check out part one. So the position we have today actually comes from one of my own recent games. And the first thing I want you guys to realize is that obviously white wants to push these past pawns forward and make queens and win the game. But this is physically just impossible because black's plan is to just keep pieces on the squares a7 and b6 and blockade white's pawns. So here if I just play knight takes b6, black wouldn't really care about losing his rook because the point is the pawns remain blockaded and I physically cannot push them forward. So my extra exchange is not really worth anything here because the position is closed and there are no open files. There's nothing here for my rooks to attack. They're just building a pressure against my own pawn. And for the rest of the game, black is not going to move his queen or his rook, but he'll just shuffle his other pieces around and it'll be very hard for me to break through. So I want you guys to pause the video and try to see if you can come up with a good plan for white to win the game. Okay, so hopefully you noticed that although the queen side is completely locked up, the king side pawn structure is slightly more flexible in that the pawns aren't fixed on their own squares. So the move I played here was g3. All I want to do now is I just want to open up the g file and once I do that I'm going to bring my heavy pieces over and infiltrate that way. Okay, in this position here, black is only concerned with making sure that these pawns aren't going forward. Right? But if I open up the king side as well, like after g3, then he's going to be have to worry about problems on both sides of the board. Okay, so my opponent, who is a strong master, played bishop f6. Now king h1, making room for my rook to come to g1. And now h4. So now black's idea is he wants to push this pawn to h3 and control this g2 square so that my queen cannot get anywhere near his king. So even if I take this pawn and play queen g2 after h3, you'll notice that all these squares are controlled by his pieces and even if I go to f2 h4 will also be controlled and h3 is protected by the bishop my queen won't be able to get inside black's position so if I allow this black will essentially have created a fortress right what that means is he'll have created a position where he can just sort of sit and wait and white won't be able to break through at all. So the move I played here in the game was queen g2. Now the point is that I want to first bring my rook to g1 and then take on h4 so that my queen can come to g6 or g8 and cause a lot of trouble for black. So this move sort of forces black to play h3 by himself. And this is good for me because I haven't committed my g pawn to go anywhere yet. Right? So after queen f1, I hope you'll notice now that my idea is to play g4, block the bishop and win the pawn. So it was very important to sort of think very logically and try to figure out what would be the most accurate way to open up the king side. After queen f1, king g7, g4. So now I want to take this pawn, 
bring my queen back and then break through with the h pawn right i just need to open file so i can use my rooks black's rooks are stuck on a7 and b6 right while mine are free to go to the king side if the king side was opened up okay now queen b8 so at this point i took on b6 and the reason is i believe black's plan was to play bishop d8 bishop c7 and then bring his queen around this way to defend his king side and by bringing his queen to the king side it will be a lot harder for me to break through because my own king is also here right once the files are opened up if his queen is down the h file then i'll have to be slightly concerned with my own king so i decided to take on b6 now to sort of misplace his queen and take on h3 another important thing here to realize is that if black plays bishop d8 and then bishop c7 and then moves his queen and wants to get his bishop to the b6 square as soon as there isn't a piece on a7 or b6 i'm just going to shove one of these pawns forward right as soon as it's physically possible for me to push one of my pawns forward i'm going to do it it doesn't really matter whether i lose this pawn or not the point is that even if i lose the pawn what i'm getting in return is that the b file will then be open and my rooks will be able to infiltrate the position remember i have an extra exchange here so if i can open everything up i'm probably going to win with my extra material so now black played bishop e8 stopping my queen from coming to h5 so queen g2 bishop d7 bishop c4 i have all the time in the world here so i'm just making sure black doesn't push this pawn forward and somehow activate his queen on this diagonal it's probably nothing to be worried about but better safe than sorry and when you have a lot of time you can take all these different prophylactic measures to assure that your opponent won't be able to do anything so bishop d8 queen f2 king g6 h4 so i'm ready to break through i just want to shove all my pawns forward until i get open files gh and now g5 so black really shouldn't take this pawn if he plays bishop takes g5 i'm going to play rook g1 and on the next move i'm going to play either queen g2 attacking the bishop or even queen takes h4 and i'm going to attack it with both of my rooks and my queen if king takes it's pretty much the same story i just bring my major pieces to the g file i'll be able to checkmate once my queen can come to g8 and harass the black king so my opponent again just waited with bishop c8 now i can't take this pawn right now because of rook h7 winning the queen so i simply played rook g1 now h3 and king h2 i think this is a really good move because i'm basically putting black in zugzwang if either of his bishops move to the seventh rank i'm going to play queen h4 and then his rook won't be able to come to h7 which means i'll be able to play queen h6 check and obviously win the game if his king moves somewhere i'm just going to push my g pawn as much as i can creating more space and more scope for the rook on g1 so here he played rook g7 and now i can push this pawn to a7 and probably win the game but i think i found something stronger here i just played rook a1 so if he goes back with his rook i'm going to play queen h4 and after rook h7 i'm just going to play a7 and the point is that after he takes my queen i can make a new queen and as you can see my rook is coming to the seventh rank and all my pieces are ready to attack and destroy black's position so my opponent here played queen a7 and now comes the last breakthrough b6 
So he takes this pawn and now rook b1, attacking the bishop, forcing the bishop to go back. And as you can see, the reason why white is winning this game is because I'm able to create threats down both sides of the board. And here, if you want to find the winning continuation, I suggest you pause the video. So here I played rook b7. I'm giving back the exchange just so I can get inside Black's position and start attacking his king. So taking my rook is pretty much force. b7, queen has to go back to a8, and now queen h4. So it was important to get rid of Black's light squared bishop because now I can come in on the light squares with my queen. And the game is basically over. So queen c8, trying desperately to control some of these squares. And now queen h6 check, king f7, and queen e6. So here my opponent resigned because I'm basically winning by force. After we trade queens, I give this check. And wherever the king moves, I just push my pawn to a7. And he cannot stop this pawn without giving up his bishop. Like rook g8, I'll just take here. And obviously the position is completely winning. So my opponent resigned there. So the main lesson from this game to take is that when the position is closed up, if you can't break through on one side of the board, you should look to break through on the other side. So in this game, I had the pass pawns on the queen side that I was basically threatening to push whenever he removed his blockade. And I was able to generate threats on the king side by opening up the position and threatening to infiltrate with my queen. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll see you around on chess.com.